sort by is pretty similar to sort, but it allows us to sort by multiple columns. And instead of using index numbers, it uses column names. And I will say that if you can understand how sort works, then you're going to pick up sort by in no time. So let's take a look at our data. Here we have a list of books, the authors, the genre that those books belong to, and then some additional information like when it was first published. And then we have the number of one, two, three, four, and five star ratings for each of these books. So what I want to do is I want to sort the books, first of all, by the most five star ratings. So we want to basically look in this column for the book that has the highest amount of five star ratings. But I want to return the book and the author in columns K and L. So for this, we can use sort by. Now, notice here that we have two mandatory arguments and one that is optional. So the first thing is the array. Now, the way that I remember this is the array that you select is always what you want to return. So I want to return the book and the author. So my array is going to be these two columns over here, comma, by array. Now, this is where we determine which column we want to sort by. So even though I want to return the book and the author, I actually want to sort these books by the most five star ratings. So the array that I want to sort by is this column just here, the five star ratings, comma. Then I get to determine if I want to sort these in ascending or descending order. So I want the most at the top, so that's gonna be descending order, which is a minus one. And if I was to press comma, you can see it goes on to by array two. So if I wanted to sort on more columns in this data set, then I could carry on going. Now I'm just going to do it by this one thing first of all. So let's just close off the bracket and hit enter. And you can see there we go. Now let's just do a quick spot check to make sure that this is right. So it's telling me that the book with the highest number of five star ratings is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. So if we take a look at this five star column, because we have a small data set, it's quite easy to find. And I can see that this is the one with the highest. We have a thousand and that is in fact that book. So this looks to be working pretty well. So a pretty straightforward formula. Now let's delete that formula out and let's sort by two different columns this time. Let's sort by genre A to Z and then author. So we're going to do sort by our array. So again, that's just the columns that we want to return, which is these two. We then need to determine what we want to sort by first. So I want to sort by the genre first of all. So we're going to select the genre column, comma, what's the sort order? So let's go for ascending comma. Now we can choose another array. So by array two. So if I then want to sort by the author name, I can simply select that column comma, and then determine my sort order. Now notice when you get onto sort order two, it doesn't actually bring up the menu underneath saying ascending or descending, which is a little bit strange, but hopefully you can remember these. One is ascending, minus one is descending. Now that's what I'm gonna put in, but check it out, we could carry on going. So if you wanted to sort by 10 columns, you could definitely do that. We're gonna stick with two. Let's close off our sort by, hit enter, and there we get our list. And if I think to myself, actually, I don't want to sort in that order, I want to sort the other way around, I'm going to go and edit my formula, and we're just going to turn these into minus ones to make them sorted in descending order, hit enter, and it switches everything around. So that's more like what I wanted to see. So that's how sort by works, really simple, not that much different from sort, except we're providing an actual column as opposed to providing index numbers, and it's a lot easier to sort on multiple columns. When it comes to doing a horizontal sort, we have to think a little bit outside the box here. If you take a look at my data set, you can see that I have some records here. Again, this is just employee information, but the records aren't in the order that I want them to be in. You can see that we have first name first, then we have our title column, then department, then last name, then salary. And I actually want these to be sorted by title, first name, last name, department, and then salary. So to get these names to sort in this correct order, we're going to need to do a horizontal sort. Now there aren't any options or arguments within the sort by function that allows us to specify if we're doing a horizontal or a vertical sort. So we need to go about this in a different way. 
Now, a method that I find quite quick is to simply number the columns in the order that we want them to appear in. So if I take a look at my data set, I want the title to be first. So underneath, I'm going to type a number one. I then want the first name next, so that's going to be two. Last name is going to be three. Then I want the department, which is four, and then salary, which is five. So I have these numbers at the bottom and I can now utilize those in my sort by to get the correct result. So let's type in equals sort by. The array that I want to sort is all of the names, but we're not going to include the numbers at this stage, comma, by array. This is where we select our numbers at the bottom, comma. Now we need to specify if we want to sort those in ascending or descending order. And because we're sorting by the numbers, if we sort in ascending order, it's going to go from one to five. If we do descending, five to one. So let's type in a one. Let's close our bracket, hit enter. And like magic, we have our record sorted correctly. We now have the title, the first name, the last name, the department, and then the salary. So I think this is a really cool way to perform a sort by. Now, if you're happy with your sort and you don't actually want these numbers to show, there are numerous different things you could do here. If you weren't particularly interested in keeping the sort by formula underneath, maybe this is just a static table that you're going to use in some analysis, then you could simply select the entire data set, control C and then control shift V to paste the values only. Once you've done that, you can simply delete out these numbers because the formulas no longer exist in the table and so we won't get reference errors if we delete out this row. The second thing you do is simply hide this row. So we can right click and we can go to hide and that's going to get rid of it but our formula still works and I'm just going to unhide that row again. The third method we could use is we could use custom formatting simply to mask these numbers. So if I select them and press control one to open up the format cells dialog, if we go to number and down into custom, if you ever want to hide anything in a cell, you can simply type in three semicolons, click on OK, and it's going to hide those numbers. Now let's undo because what you'll also notice is because I've put these at the bottom, this kind of impedes this data set growing. If I want to add another record onto the bottom, I'd move this down and then it might mess up my formula. So what I would probably do instead is put these at the top. So I'm just going to move them up here and you can see that the formula actually updates. So it now says B3 to F3. Now, another thing to know is currently if I was to start to try and add other records into the bottom, notice that it's not actually updating in the formula. And that's because my data set isn't in a table. So that illustrates quite nicely the importance of putting all of your data sets into tables first. It just means that if they change, then your formulas are going to all stay up to date. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.